Um, Peter, we normally do these diaries in sort of chronological order, but I can't, I'm just going to skip yesterday because yeah. it was a day off, frankly. <laughs> and we've, we could talk for hours, well, I could talk for hours about today. Uh, as far as days at work go, or days in your life go, it was a pretty good one, right? Pretty good day today, yeah. Um, this is the Friday, the, what are we, 9th of June. Um, we've had a Superstock race today and a Super Twin race today. And everything has probably gone as bad, as well as it could do. We won both races, which is unreal. To win one, one race at the TT is a massive feat. To finish is a massive feat. So when you're able to even be in a, with the chance of winning, it's, uh, it's unbelievable. And to win two in the same day is, yeah, immense. I mean, the Superstock bike, Monster BMW by FHO Racing, working ace. It has been the whole time we've been sat here. It's been working really really well i feel really happy with it i just feel like i can put the bike wherever i want to put it and uh yeah just feels feels really good so I've, i know how fast i can go on it if i really really want to michael had really upped his game for today from tuesday to today he'd, he'd gone a lot faster i think he did a 34 7 in the end on the stalker so like really really fast he held the super stock lap record for about 20 seconds <laughs> <laughs> um and I'd, I could see off my pit boards that he'd really raised his game and I was edging away, but only literally edging away. In some sectors, he'd come back a bit and we were very, very similar. So on the last lap, I thought, all right, well, let's just have a little bit of a dig and see where we can end up. And uh, I had a real clear run. Didn't didn't have anyone to pass, which was nice. Um, in fact, I did. I passed McGuinness. Uh, I did pass McGuinness on that lap, but um, yeah, just just a clean clean run, really. Just just nice. I was just really enjoying riding the bike. No, I think that's half the battle here. If you're really enjoying riding the bike and you just flow with it and let the bike just do what it wants to do and wear, um, the, the time comes. And um, yeah, I, I knew when I crossed the line, uh, I knew on, I knew halfway around the lap that it was it was a good lap. And then I was toying in my head, what do I do? Do I pull some wheelies like I normally do for the crowd and do some waving and stuff, or do I just keep my head down and see where we end up? And with, with a lap time really, because by this this point I was already eight or ten seconds in front, so I could have rolled off if I wanted to, but um, quite a few people, not just in the team, but other people from Tuesday were like, oh, why don't you just do the lap record just for the end? And it's nice that you do all that for the fans. And even the fans were saying, oh, we'd rather you kind of kept your head down. So I did a bit of waving and I did a bit of looking at a few people kind of towards the end of the lap, but fair, pretty much kept my head down all the way. And I knew when I crossed the line, 1636 came up on the dash. And I thought, oh, well, that'll be... If it's not 36, it's pretty damn well close to it. And uh, and yeah, 36, 3, 5, 8, I think it was in the end, yeah. which is um, obviously oh. the fastest ever lap of the Ironman TT, which Six is brilliant. Six and a half seconds faster than your previous best. Yeah. yeah, 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 nearly a mile an hour faster than before, yeah. It's extraordinary. Yeah. Um, we, do you, you've, you've said it already about, about the last lap and sort of pull, pull, almost pulling the pin, really. Do you feel like wound up a little bit about everything that's happened this week with other people up in their game and... Uh, not wound up as such, no. It's, it's good to see the competitions there. It's nice, you know, it, there's no point in winning if everyone else is shit. Because <laughs> that just, it's just pointless. It's, you know, we want some healthy competition. We want everyone to be on the game and we want everyone to be fast. And then when you can beat people when they're fast, you're proving your proper point. And you know that you are the best and you have the best bike and you've made the best bike and you've got the best team and that's how it should be. You know, if, you, if you're winning by a minute and a half, there's no competition. No. And then it's just boring for everyone. It's a bit of a hollow victory, in my opinion, if it's like that. You know, we, we want it to be close. We want it to be time. We want it to be hard work. You know, it shouldn't come easy. It's not meant to be easy. There's no reward in that. Yeah. So, and it loses you to be better, too. Yeah, absolutely. That, so absolutely. you feel it in your head and your heart that you've really succeeded today? A hundred percent. Yeah, absolutely brilliant. I mean, the Super Twin was slightly different. Um, but the, the Super Stock race, yeah, a hundred percent. Like, we, we showed who, who, is, <laughs> who is on form. And who can do what they want to do? <laughs> Super Twin. The R7 was in bits yesterday. Well, it was a, a frame, wasn't it? Yeah, it's a, it's a frame again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, the Super Twin is a slightly different story. Um, we were not expecting to be on the podium, to be totally honest. The fact we finished fourth on Tuesday was immense, to be quite honest. Um, we hadn't even done a lap on it. I'd done no more than seven miles on it up, up until Tuesday. Um, both times I tried to do a practice lap in, in the practice week, it, it had an ignition problem, which was a real shame. Unfortunately, ruined both of my engines. I thought two engines was going to be enough, and apparently it wasn't. Um, so, yeah, uh, unfortunately, that was uh, almost pretty much game over to a point. And then Michael Rutter and the Bathams team um, stepped up and, and lent us their spare engine, along with Nick Morgan from MSS, which was absolutely fantastic. 
Um, it's probably going to cost me a lot of money in the long run. <laughs> even more now. Yeah, even more now. Um, but yeah, they um, they they lent me their spare engine. They didn't have to. So a massive thanks to them. You know, I, I literally wouldn't have raced without them. So um, so yeah, big credit to them. Uh, and to finish fourth on the Tuesday, we were just not expecting. I, I thought if we finished top ten, we've had a good result. Um, and to finish fourth, I was twenty some seconds off off a podium, uh, which is not a horrendous amount considering. Uh, I only did the one lap in the morning. Yeah, um, yeah you had to qualify that day, didn't you? Yeah, so the organisers are super good. I've said, I've spoken about it already, but basically the organisers give us dispensation, not just me, but a few of the riders that had not had chance to qualify properly, that allow us to do the warm-up lap, and as long as we complete it with a reasonable time, although it's untimed, they can see what we do, um, then, then they'd let us race. So they did exactly that, and, and obviously for me it's paid off dividends fourth place on Tuesday uh, with no mechanical failures for anyone, so really that's where we're positioned is fourth. And then today, expecting really to probably just be fourth again. That was kind of the expectation. Um, first lap, I saw Jamie Coward pulling over at the end of Kurt Michael. Um, so I was like, oh, maybe I can get a, maybe I could get a podium. If everything goes right, maybe we can sneak onto the podium. And then I saw Michael pulling over at Windy on the at the end of the first lap. And I was like, oh, we might have a chance of a second place. And first place was a long way ahead. I mean, Mick, Bra Mick Brown was, I think, 15 seconds or something ahead. But I had a big gap behind, behind me. Um, but to be honest, the R7's um, not a match for the pattern on, on top speed um, at the minute. You know, we're super underdeveloped compared to, to them and the ER6s. You know, they've been in this class for years. We got the R7 running the Saturday that we went to the Northwest, which was like, what, four weeks ago? So it's not an old bike at all. It hasn't got a lot of development at all. Um, but the one thing it did keep doing was keep running. And, and the twins race is a war of attrition a lot of the time. And today proved exactly that. You know, the, the front three guys all stopped with mechanicals. Um, and the little R7 kept going. So I'm super, super happy for my guys. The P England racing team, PHR performance. They were working on it all day yesterday. They had the head, the, the bike in, it stripped in bits, engine stripped in bits yesterday, fettling whatever they could do to try and get the best and the absolute most out of it. Uh, and today she ran, she ran well, no real problems. The wind was a bit of a pain, um, and she's not the lightest thing on the grid either, which doesn't help in the twins race. But, uh, did, but yeah, here did we are on the dyno. Or do you use you off the line thinking, well, it feels all right for now? No, so it was on the dyno even late last night, about ten o'clock last night, when they'd finished everything. They got it back on the dyno. And Pete Clifford from Active Force was there doing the fuel in and ignition, perhaps. And oh man, it's been yeah, been hard work. But then when you get days like today, and I know we were gifted it really from from the other guys. Not finishing, but to finish first, first you must finish. And that is, uh, you know, TT's a bit about that. You know, it's an endurance race as much as anything else. And the bikes get a hammering round here. So um, you need to be have enough power without it being unreliable. The bikes get a hammering, so do you guys. How are you feeling physically? I'm all right, actually. I'm not too bad at all, yeah. Um, it's only the super bike, really, that's hard work. Everything else is, is good. But, um, yeah, physically-wise, I'm, I'm pretty good. Seeing you tomorrow, what's the plan? Good question. There's a lot of talk about whether we're going to be on a stocker or a zoo bike and all the rest of it, but um, I think I haven't had a proper chat with the team yet because yeah. I've literally like done the super stock race, then done the super twin race, and I've had half an hour just to chill by myself, had some food, and now I'm doing this. But um, I'm not sure we have enough wheels, rear wheels, to run the super stock in the super bike race. I don't think, but I might be wrong. Obviously, Josh is running the super stock bike in the super bike race, but um, I don't think we have enough wheels to do it all. And also, that engine's done quite a lot. So it's done obviously practice week and then it's done Pushed out. two superstar races. I think it, I think realistically speaking, it's probably a little bit of a gamble to run it just from an engine mileage point of view. And and if we don't have enough wheels and that already seals our fate before we've started anyway. Having said that, as hard as the bike is to ride, I did a 35.4 on it the other day with a load of problems, with a heap of problems. So. I, you know, one way or another, if I really have to, I can I can make it work. It's just not going to be an easy race. Have you done much between then and now? Yeah, I did a warm lap on it this morning. Um, we had brakes, which is a massive nice. bonus. That was the biggest problem for me was like, I don't really, I do care, but I don't care so much if it's hard work as long as I've got brakes, because how it was on Sunday was not nice. Um, but yeah, um, shifter was fine, blipper was fine, brakes were fine but it's still super aggressive for some reason. And I can't work out why. It's not aggressive from an engine point of view, it's an aggressive from chassis point of view. And it's, it's really weird. We can't quite work out why, to be fair, but 
it is what it is. We'll um, we'll keep having a go. Will you use that lap in the morning, or is that a bit too much? I personally would rather not. However, if we're going to ride a superbike, I think we'll have to, um, because I need to try and calm it down somehow. Mega job. What a day. <laughs> 12 wins. Congratulations to you, sir. Thank you very much. Cheers, Levon. John, uh, TT Diaries, I think we're up to day 9 and 10 now, uh, and, and yesterday was a day up to start there in, in chronological order. Do you, how do you relax when you're at this place? <laughs> I mean, you're mobbed everywhere you go. Uh, it's, it's difficult to relax, and even when you've got, when you have got time off and you try and nip out of the paddock, it's, it doesn't go away for me. My stomach's churning all the time. My stomach's been churning for two weeks. Uh, and uh, at, this, at this stage, it gets quite tough, you know. It's really hard because the fans are bound without the fans or nothing. Uh, but it's just one more, just one more, just one more. <laughs> Picture yourself is always really like, Ugh. but I, 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 hey, listen, you know, when I go, oh, when I'm sat in my front room on Monday morning and I'm on the, well, then I'm on my way to school, dropping me off of school, nobody will give a shit. It'll just be John, the dad, going to school. So uh, at the minute, just, Enjoy, enjoy the atmosphere. The weather's been amazing, so we'll just, uh, we'll, yeah, just go with the flow of the meeting. Do you, your family help you relax on a day off? They, you know, you spend time with them. You go, you go away from the paddock. Do you? Yeah, we, yesterday we went to Port Erin for a nosy round, an ice cream on the beach there. Then we came back for peel and had a fish at peel, and they had chippy, chippy dinner. Uh, <laughs> But uh, <laughs> I can't stomach it because I know they're racing the next day, so I'm like, more oh, first me feel sick. So well, I can't wait till I cross the line and I see I'm going to have something massively unhealthy and I'm going to smash my fridge with all the beer in it and uh, get plenty of that down me. But uh, yeah, you, you, as riders, you sort of get back from Philip to pose, but as a family, you know, she's got to be the bad guy sometimes and, and drag me out of, the pa out of the paddock. And I'm glad she did yesterday. I got a few hours away, so. Um, you obviously been working on your fitness, if you don't mind me saying. and and. You're looking as uh, aerodynamic as you have done in the last few years, and <laughs> other than watching you eat wieners the other day on that diaries <laughs> thing we did. <laughs> How do you, do you do? You literally just don't eat ice cream, don't eat fish and chips. Are you are you conscious of it right now? If you're here in the TT, I know you've got half yeah. looking over your shoulder as well, and he's quite yeah. Not... To be fair, half breathing down my neck a little bit, but I hate to say it, but he's right. You know, at the end of the day, you know, you are what you eat. I find it difficult now to digest stuff. You know, I, I love a pie, I love potatoes, spuds, gravy and all that, but it just sits here now and I can't. I need stuff easy to digest and uh, over the last couple of months, it has actually made me feel a little bit better. Uh, I once I've been in the gym pumping iron or anything like that, there not be a cycling and it comes to that time of year where I'm just out and about. I like humping stuff around at home, you know, just battering around, a bit of mowing grass and fixing a few fences and get up in the morning. I don't feel like eating as much and... Uh, you definitely drop weight as the TT goes along because you're working hard. I mean, I, I even got, oh, some of the lads got them whoops on out of the hour and I think Toddy did 3,000 calories the other day of practice, so nine, eight, nine laps or something. So it's crafting at that. So you're going to be, you're going to be dropping the timber. So <clears throat> I think a haircut and a shave knocked five kilos off me. <laughs> I've been whipping me like a dog all week. Make sure you keep shaved. Make sure you look a lot better. Shave everywhere. So like, I don't have any hairs on my bollocks or anyway, but. The sun tan helps, it makes me, makes me new teeth look a bit whiter when I've got a bit of a tan on, but it, yeah, it's hard. It's all about concentration, it's all about getting the balance right with the team, everybody's happy, we're all focused on what we're doing, you know. Quite frustrating, because I'm not frustrated, it, it, it's reality and honesty that I'm not right at the front, I can't run their pace, I've had my go at that, smashing them laps out and winning races, but hey, I was six in the scene here, it was looking good in the first, Superstar race, second superstar race there. Had a little issue, we ended up still finishing eighth. So, you know, if, you, if, if you're top 10 in TT and you're taking all those gold and silver replicas, then I don't think, I think you're doing all right at any level of that. How many replicas have you got now? I lost count, probably 130 something. About 130 something, because a lot of them were fastest laps as well. Even though I've had 100 stars, a few wins you get. You have the fastest lap of the race, you get an extra one. So. Yeah, it's, uh, three classy TT wins, but yeah, I've got, yeah. There's room for more, though. I'll squeeze some more in. Have a bigger garage. Um, yeah, so moving on to today, you went out there warm up this morning and you went the super bike, didn't you? Yeah, super bike. Any reason why? Because I'm not going to do the warm up lap tomorrow because seven laps is too much for me. Yeah. Six laps, I'll, I'll be sharper for that. Uh, so I wanted just to have a ride on the big girl. They're the ones that, you know, uh, they are the ones that <laughs> they're pulling you hard. 
and the just slightly different, ever so slightly different. Because a super stock bike now is a super, a super stock bike is a super bike with lights on it. It's as simple as that, you know. Showed that today with Hickey doing 136. Incredible. Off the charts, you know. Uh, so yeah, the, I just wanted to just, I certainly lap on the super, super bike, loved that, really enjoyed that. Super stock bike, sort of, I've liked my super bike better. I should really like my stocker better. I've ridden it more all year in the BSB, but I feel a bit more comfortable on my super bike for some reason. So I'm looking forward to tomorrow. Mm, mm. And like I say, it's, it's six bloody tough laps, two pit stops. So, and uh, you know, weather's looking good. So concentrate for another hour and 45 minutes and get in the fridge. <laughs> That's what you're looking forward to. Yeah. Tell me a bit more about the super stock race today. So you, it's, a, it's a eighth place, wasn't it? For you, uh, yeah. does two eight eight base finishes, and how did, well, how did it work out? Tell me about your everything. Was good, you know. I got my head down at the start, and uh, I was expecting Michael to come past, and he caught me in the first race at the veranda, and he didn't. He caught me a bit later this time, so um, that was good for me. So I've actually going a bit faster in the race, and I'm always thinking he's going to catch me next. And, Hickey caught me, but he caught me a lot further in the race. He only caught me on the last lap, which I knew was going good, good pit stop. And then uh, another slight issue, clutch started slightly slipping in the uh, on the third lap, coming out of uh, Greeber Bridge. But because uh, I've been around a long time, I rolled out of it, sacrificed maybe five, maybe five, six, seven seconds just to get the free play out of the clutch and then get back down to business. He sort of knocked me out of the rhythm, but it's, it's an honest result. If I was... If I didn't have the clutch slipping, I would have been seventh, so I ended up eighth, I think. So Hilly beat me by a second, which was ah, a little bit frustrating. So close. Any particular tactics or plans for the senior? Not, not really tactics. I don't think there's anything we've got left, really. Uh, honestly, the superbike is, is way better than I am. Uh, the bike's a race winning package. Uh, so all I can do is just good sleep tonight. It's a bit of fuel on board, keep hydrated <laughs> <laughs> yeah. and just get grab it by the horns and, and and do my best, you know, and then Good man. I don't know really. I've no I wish I could look into the future and tell you, but if I get home in the top six, I'll be happy. If I get on the podium, I'm doing a new streak. And if Toddy gets on the podium, I have to have a tattoo of him on my arse and vice versa, so we'll see. Stakes are high. We're going into the tattoo parlor, one of us anyway. <laughs> Good man. Thanks, John. Talk to you tomorrow. Cheers. Thank Cheers. you. Um, so, yeah, so video diaries, uh, day nine and ten, we'll, 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 we'll box it off. In fact, if we do it in chronological order, oh, I like that word. Did you have a nice day off yesterday? <laughs> You never do. do. Do you chill out? Can you chill out? Are you feeling relaxed? You never get a day off at the Isle of Man. You never do. It's obviously we'll strip this down, we'll put new shift the rods and this with like your strip clean and because of the violence of the place. Now, I've used that word so many times, but it is violent. It's great. <laughs> Just bounce around everything, things break, things are fracturing all over the place. But it's um No, it's say uh, you never you never get a moment of breathe. Never get a moment of breathe. And what about today? So you started off, you went out in the warm-up lap. No, I didn't. You I do didn't. go out in the warm-up lap. I did not go out in the warm-up <laughs> lap. You know, hence my third erect thingy here. There you are. <laughs> Very That's hell shot, isn't it? Very pert. <laughs> why, uh, may I ask why? There was no reason to go out. You're happy with this? I say this, the ladies and gentlemen can't see that this is the your superstop bike. No, so obviously, you know, I'm sitting here with my feet up on the bench, looking under the bike. Piggy's been working his backside off. Same with Andy Brown and Lauren, my dad, you know, Fran, Neil, you know, everyone. You know, we're just a family, you know, a family little ran team down here in the Tortuga paddock, the rough end. It's class, man. It's absolutely class. But um, no, I don't, I don't know how I feel about the warm-up laps, to be honest, because we did one the other day, you know, and it was actually on the one of the other bikes, on the R6, off the Daffabet teams. And it's just totally backwards, because you think, push, but don't push. If this goes bang, I'm out of the race. And then, but people's argument is, well, if it goes bang in practice, it's going to go bang in the race. But I'd rather it go bang chasing something mm. rather than the other way around. Same with suspension setup and everything. It's, you know, you're going to go three, four seconds quicker in every sector regardless when you're pushing on. So, yeah, I'm, but in the same breath, I get full-on FOMO, fear of missing out. Full-on, like, and 
that's like the head games of it because you're watching all the like the top lads go out. But then arguably, you don't see Hickman doing the warm-up laps. He did the other day to qualify his twin for that twin race. But Michael Dunlop doesn't go and do them. John McGuinness doesn't do it. You know, it's like, there are you know there are pros and cons to doing it. You know, if you're in a real bad situation, I crack on. But for us, not saying I'm tight, but just save 24 litres of fuel and a set of tyres, you know, set of Metzlers, just uh, keep the keep the funds down, keep the funds down. You just say, we, we were talking off camera about, the, about the, the sort of the physicality of this place as well. Do you think that's part of the parcel of, of why people perhaps don't go out because of the, to the physical nature of it? Yeah, it's... Um, In terms of the bike and yourself? Yeah, 100%. It's, um, you know, like today we've done... If you did the, if you did the warm-up lap, that would have been seven laps. Like, and it's a lot round here, you know, a 37 mile long lap. And like, when you think a senior is six laps long, and that's the equivalent of going from Liverpool to London. It's just, it's just on B roads at like 200 mile an hour. It's just, it, full throttle. it blows your head. And the problem is, the biggest fight around here is the, is the mental fight. Because if you make a mistake around Knock Hill, for example, it's like a sub 50 second lap. You know, you're, you're very quickly round to go correct that mistake. But, like, fundamentally, tomorrow, you get six goals, at, at, like, you get six goals at each corner. And you want all your strength to go into that. So, but, like, tomorrow morning, we have turned the bike upside down again because we had a really rubbish practice week um, in diary day one, two, three. And it, God, I've just turned into the absolute whinger on your channels, you know what I mean? You get Hickman on, you get McGuinness on, like, eh, everything's grand, and I'm just sitting here whinging. Maybe it's like therapy. Does it make you feel better to get it all out? I know, just don't send me the invoice. <laughs> it's been an expensive day. But um, no, just want to keep everything as fresh as we can for the race. What's the plan from here? Tell me about Superstock. So you, yeah. after your uh, glorious 130 lap the other day, did a 129.7. Yeah, um, did crap. <laughs> like I, No, I didn't do crap, far from it, but it just took me too long to get chase that rabbit because it's weird. You know, three laps is used to the four and then you're thinking about the senior as well and you think you can get through this but also it's like and Michael Rutter who's accidentally become my arch nemesis this year it's just been me and him tossing them throwing places which is pretty cool to say you know look at what the lad's achieved throughout his whole career and he's still so so fast but going into that start race I saw Rutter off into the distance and I was going oh god you know me to pull my finger out and then the harder you try around here the slower you go but with the th it was it was kind of like a shuggy boat. It just didn't want it did not want to didn't want to change direction at high speed because we softened everything off. But we've corrected it and we've played around with a couple of little things because we run very minimal uh, traction control here. Like a British, you can set the bike up. Even the S thousand, we're not running the M like everyone else. But even on this, you can set up each traction map to each gear to each corner. But the lap's so big around here, you can't get a base set, and we run it very, very minimum. And I think tomorrow we're just going to turn the bloody thing off and just, you know, full whiskey it, buy a cowboy hat and <laughs> get some snake skin boots and just fully live the dream. So that is, that's my plan. But don't tell everyone, though. Don't tell everyone. Promise I won't. <laughs> uh, and then you moved on, didn't you, to the uh, Super Twins race. Oh, you... that's so subject. Can don't, we... don't talk about can... that yet. That's... Chronologically speaking, let's start. You So you went off in number one. I mean, what's that like? You obviously did it earlier oh. in the week and, and you road sweeping or however you like to call it. You clearly like doing it. Is it all right? Do you, do you get a choice? But when you, when you get seeded, they pick the number for you as far as the event organisers. Now, to be fair, I absolutely love them the bits because... They offered me the number this year and said, would like to go off number one? I'm going, definitely, without a doubt. You know, it's... Prestigious. You know, when you think, like, this event started in 1907, realistically, there hasn't been a lot of number one riders in, in that, sh like, in that long space of time. So being able to go down at number one, it was a total different... Well, that's Super Twin that made it, unlike mine. There you <laughs> but, like, getting to go down number one is a total different form of adrenaline. Because normally, psychologically, you're chasing someone and when you see them and you're reeling them back in, you're going, right, I'm making progress and you forget about everyone else and you're just building on it and building on it. But when you're number one, you are that rabbit. You know, we've got a saying in the office, you know, let the dog see the rabbit. And unfortunately, you know, I'm, I'm covered in sugar and ice. I'm, I'm, I'm a cake for someone, never mind a bleeding rabbit. And yeah, no, I did, I did enjoy that race because... When you get to a final race, 
around the TV circuit on a particular bike, you've got to wait a whole year to come back. So I got on, I got on Franz and Neil's super twin there, Counting Racing, and unfortunately, I, I, I was trying, I was really trying, and unfortunately, ended up in a, a DNF with the Conrod deciding to come. You ever, seen the, film, you ever seen the film Alien? Oh, where it comes out. Yeah, you know yeah. when aliens pop out the chest. That's, that's what like, the crankcases are looking like right now. So big hole in the side. Yeah. Oh but, um, I'm going to put a sponsorship plea out there. <laughs> if there's anyone who wants to buy a new engine, that would be awesome. Oh. You're holding that monster can. Yeah. Um, right. yeah where <laughs> is it there? You were running well, weren't you? You were enjoying yourself. You were running well. You saw P3, was it, on your on your board? Yeah, so I saw, you know, P3 coming up on the mountain. Obviously, there was a few DNFs, and that's the nature, especially on the lower capacity bikes. You know, you're revving them harder and you're just you're just trying to get every inch out of them in the mid-turn. But because of lower capacity, you're tuning them higher, which is going to lead naturally to more DNFs throughout the race. But you've got to be in it to win it in that side of things. And I saw P3 and I've, it was electric. I've been very lucky that I've won a race around the mountain course before at the Manx Farm. Like, sorry, the classic TT was there, but now it's becoming the Manx. But to lead a TT off at number one and coming around for that final lap and you've got people sticking out the hedgerow and at first I thought they would just be mates because they're all doing that and it was actually P2 I thought <laughs> how do I know this fella he knows me he's sticking the fingers up on this but to see P2 was just like oh my giddy hand but at that point you're going well he can't roll and just get the bike home you can get mugged round here so so quickly you know it's a four second you know I think I had a four second lead in third and then um, Pierre, I, I, I'm going to be insulting them terribly. Um, the French rider who was riding for PHR performance on the pattern, he got, he absolutely, he was storming away and I kept in front of him and I pulled the gap. But the little engine, that, the little engine that quite didn't do it. The little engine packed up the ghost, young and So it was going well, wasn't it? Oh, so you got a cigarette. I don't <laughs> smoke, but I could really, oh. <laughs> Take the weight off. This, it is therapy, isn't it, really? <laughs> Um, what about plans for the senior? You get more nervous about doing the six laps. You know, we're running a stock bike against super bikes. You know, we're down. But to put it in comparison, you know, I've done a fair few laps around here now, like this year, and the fastest we've got out of that bike is 183. And when you think Michael Dunlop's R6 is doing 179, 178, you know, it's it, for a stocker, it's just, it's a little bit down, but it's uh, it's an older bike. But I'm over the moon with how it's handling because obviously I can I can compensate that with the time. But I'm just going to look forward to this race because normally every year I come here, I'm always panicking, thinking I need to improve my time, I need to improve my time. I've already done that. But you race bikes, I race bikes, people watching this are naturally competitive because they're involved in motorcycles. You just get over one hurdle, you just want to go a little bit more. And if I find five seconds... On top of my one thirty time, I'll be in the one thirty ones comfortably. Five, Five seconds. seconds, and now it's someone's yeah. in, it's a red bull to a rag now, isn't it? And you're going, sounds achievable. It sounds it does. You know what I mean? And well, you know we've come here, and done a personal best, and that's what this place is about. And yeah, even Hickman today, who's just done a stonking lap time, brought the lap record on a stocker, and even he'll be coming home going, I can go a little bit more. That's what this sport's about. It's just class, man. It's class. I but no, the plan is to win. Yeah, that, that's a shorter answer, man. Right? Yeah, I'm just going to pour sugar in shite in everyone's fuel tanks tonight. But don't tell anyone. I promise I won't. The damn right. But your secret's safe with me. Appreciate your time, Dom. Thank you. Good luck tomorrow. Thank you very much, son. See you in a bit. <laughs>